Hey guys, welcome back to the channel here at Reno Air Races 2023. I'm sure you guys already know I've been out here for a couple days. I've been giving the camera to Amelia to go out and interview our pilots out here at the Reno Races. So I guys, I hope you guys enjoy those uh, little talks and interviews that Amelia is going to be doing as she's going to be continuing to do that throughout the whole week. But for now, I guess you guys hope you guys enjoyed the show. We got AirSmart out here. We got our PC-12 on static display as well. Feel free to come by and check it out. It's uh, out here for the public. So, um, yeah. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, Amelia's going to go out and talk to a bunch of the race pilots uh, this week. And um, we're going to keep you guys posted and updated on what's going on this week. Uh, the vlog for the Reno Air Races. My name's Diesel Dave. What's your name? Amelia. Nice to meet you. What have you been doing? Today I'm out enjoying the air races, listening to the sounds of the airplane soaring through the sky and getting to meet cool people like you. Mm -hmm. Well, what, why are you here? Because I heard you were here. <laughs> that and it's the last Reno air races. You know, you can't miss it. Yeah. Um, my family's got a really cool connection to the races. My, my dad's uncle. Bill was the one who started the air races, and his brother Crossan is the one who used to fly for the military out here and was killed, and they named the airport after him. So it's got a really strong family connection for us, and I just love coming out with my dad and my brother. It's awesome. Well, if you have a favorite plane, what would I choose this one. This one's a racing plane. Oh, okay, okay, a racing plane. Um, I really like the Limitless guys. I like Big Red. Uh, stole planes. I like all the Patey stuff, but they're not racing this year. Number 44. that has got the snowmobile engine for the stole, stole drags, the yellow plane. Rad. Love that plane. So, what what type of plane is Big Red? Uh, I know it's an AT6. Um, it sounds cool. It's got a big motor they're watching change because they blew their motor the day before they got here. And they had to change it out yesterday, and they're going to hopefully get in the air right now. It's been down to the wire, and they've had like a crew of 30 people turning every nut and bolt trying to figure out what's wrong with it so it's been cool to watch the family the air races swarm around one guy that they want to get in the air mm -hmm. i mean half the guys aren't even on his team the big red guys are working and other guys are helping them and they're doing all they can to get him in the air for the last reno air races so how did you get into flying or aviation you know my dad was a pilot growing up i was a air force brat my dad my dad had me when i was in lubbock texas and we just traveled around doing air force stuff then he started flying commercial and I remember when I was six or seven years old, he had a family reunion in South Dakota and he picked us up in a little 172, maybe it was one age, I don't remember, I was really little and he let me fly. So we picked up my grandma and my two uncles and we flew and I was up front just, I could only see the gauges in the yoke, I couldn't see over the dash. And I was like, this is the coolest thing ever, I gotta do this more. And so luckily all the windows of opportunity in life opened up and now I get to fly helicopters and airplanes and have all sorts of fun. Nice. Do you have a YouTube channel or like something you want to shout out to? Yeah. Check out Heavy D Sparks. Check out uh, Sparks Motors. But what I would do is watch this little girl because she's going to do big things. Big, big things. Thank you. Well, nice and, meeting you. And by the way, I didn't just meet her just now. I already knew her. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> well, nice meeting you. Nice to meet you. See you next time. See you next time. <laughs> I'm Jerry Kirby. My call sign's Jive, and uh, I have been flying for 49 years. How did you get into aviation? You know, um, I got into aviation because uh, I went to my county, my city fair. It's really not a city; it was a town of 800 people. But uh, they were selling airplane rides for one penny a pound. I was 10 years old, and I weighed 75 pounds. And so I paid 75 cents to go up in my first airplane ride. And immediately when we got up and we leveled off and I looked down and there was a road going down there and there were the cars going down there and it looked like a bunch of ants just going into an anthill. 
I go, this is really cool to be up here to be able to see this. And from that moment on, I was hooked. And so, uh, when I was 15, um, I started flying lessons. And uh, I worked my way up uh, to solo on my 16th birthday. And then I took the next year to get all the requirements done for my private pilot's license. And on my 17th birthday, I went and took my check ride. And uh, going at it ever since. Nice. How do, you, how do you like flying? Well, I like flying a lot. Uh, to me, it's, it's just as natural as uh, getting in a car and going somewhere. I mean, it's just what I do every day. And I fly virtually every day. I'm airborne in something. Um, so... It's just a part of my life. I can't even separate it. It's just like walking down the road to me. Nice. Is there anything special about the plane that you want to show us? Well, you know, this is an L-39C. It was built in 1984 in the Czech Republic from a company called Aerovota Cody. And uh, there were over 2,000 of them built, you know, in this, uh, in this configuration. And um, its top speed is over 500 miles an hour. You know, we're out here at Reno right now. We're uh, qualified at 446 miles an hour. So there's other L39s, uh, one other L39 out here that qualified over 500 miles an hour. So there's ways to make them lighter to get a little more thrust out of the engines. And they really, really go. But it's a two-seat tandem configuration uh, because it was made as a trainer. You know, back in the, back when it was built. So uh, it's got a it's got the original type of engine in it. It's a Ukrainian built engine and puts out about 3,800 pounds of thrust. So wow. the airplane weighs, the gross weight of the airplane is just a little over 10,000 pounds. So um, it's very easy to fly. It's a straight wing airplane, uh, not complicated whatsoever. The systems aren't complicated at all, hydraulic systems. The flight controls are all pulleys, so there's no mechanical boost or hyper, sorry, pneuma hydraulic boost. Uh, to the flight controls, so it was a uh, very fun, predictable, easy airplane to fly. Anybody can fly them with a little bit of experience. Wow, cool. What class are you in in Reno this year? So I'm in the jet class, and uh, I'm in the gold class. So currently I'm in third place in the gold class this year. That's super cool. Well, thank you. Nice meeting you. Nice to meet you, Amelia. Nice to meet you, too. I'm Kevin Quinn, and your name is Amelia. Yes. And you're like the fastest race car driver I know. <laughs> so, what do you do? I run Stoll Drag here at Reno. It's sort of our crazy invention that we did out in the desert where your dad flies his really cool PC-12 too and lands out there we call Dead Cow. And uh, we run this whole craziness where we have our bush planes, our big tired airplanes, some kids call them cartoon tired planes. <laughs> And uh, we fly our airplanes basically on a course that's 2,000 feet down and back to a complete stop on both ends. And we have this motto we've coined that you have to win. In order to win it, you have to run that course under a minute. So we always say under a minute to win it. So our guys are going fast. They're hitting about 150 miles an hour at the midway. And then they go down the 2,000 feet. They land on or after a line, come to a complete stop. They spin around, they come all the way back at about a thousand feet, they cut the power. You'll see the airplanes fly sideways through the air, which is kind of cool. And everybody goes, oh my gosh, what's gonna happen? And then he corrects with the rudder. You're a pilot, you know, you kick the rudder straight, on or out to the line, come to a complete stop on heading. The guy that usually wins is under a minute to hit it. So I run Stoll Drag, this is my baby. Nice. Yeah. So how did you get into aviation? I got into aviation growing up in Alaska. I was younger than you guys and your sisters, and I started flying in the back seat of my dad's airplane. Gosh, before I could even remember how to talk. One thing leads to the next, and now I'm 54 years old, and I fly a Stearman, I fly a T6, I fly a P-51 Mustang, I fly a Carbon Cub, and uh, I just am passionate about aviation. And what I think is really cool is what you're doing right now for your YouTube channel, because I think more people like you need to be involved, get off the video games, do something cool, get into aviation. Oh my goodness, I got checked out on a P-51 this summer, that was fun. But I love my carbon cup because we can land on mountaintops. The 180s, is there such a thing as a bad airplane? I think I like them all. No. 
hard to say I have a favorite. I think, honestly, like, everybody should like every plane. Right? I think they should so, all. Some people don't like planes as much, but they don't, don't not like them. I agree. I think, I think everyone should like Maverick. I think our job as aviation ambassadors, because you're an aviation ambassador, I think our job is to get people out and get them inspired to go fly. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize how much aviation can affect their life and take them to cool places. Commercially, they can fly all over the world, and maybe take people for hire. Professionally, there's jobs like crop dusters and care flight and charter stuff, like what your dad does. How cool is that? And so, you know, there's so many opportunities in aviation that are so much better than sitting at home playing Minecraft on the darn computer. Get out and explore the world and, and maybe learn something like flying. And next thing you know, you're flying all over the world. You're coming to Reno and I get to talk to you. <laughs> nice. How cool is that? Now what's special about this plane here? This plane is special because it's a famous uh, carbon cub, obviously. Red Bull has sponsored it. Uh, you've heard of Mark and Mike Patey, I'm sure. Everybody knows the Patey brothers. Well, they basically, Mike took this whole plane apart and rebuilt it from scratch. And there's so many cool things with the gas tank down below rather than in the wings, putting the, the aft CG a little further back so there's heavy braking. The whole concept behind this was to land on top of that big building in Dubai, right? There's a neat structural integrity uh, platform back here so if it came up short, it slammed the tail without braking. Uh, it's got some fancy stuff in the engine, but this is a unique airplane in itself. And you can fly this airplane. The way you fly, you can fly this airplane. Wow, thank you. Nice meeting you too. Hey, it's nice meeting you. Now, I've seen you do aerobatics. Tell me about yourself. How much time do you have in an airplane? <laughs> you don't know. I haven't, I haven't started the vlog yet. So. When did you start flying? At like two. Two? And you're how old now? Eleven. Eleven. So you're eleven going on twenty-one. So you have at least, you have a lot of time. You have more time than a lot of people. So you know how to fly. So, and you can touch the rudder pedals, almost. Now she can. So now you're officially dangerous. I think that you could officially fly this plane. As soon as you can hit the rudder pedal, this is probably one of the easiest planes to fly. Yeah, I have a friend that actually has a carbon cup too. And he actually lands it on an ambulance. So those friends are the best friends to know because you know you never know when somebody says, here, take my keys. What do you like about aviation? I think it's just like you're free in the air. Like feels like you're Nothing like the freedom of flight, right? Which, what's your favorite plane? Probably an F-22. An F-22, and why is that? It's a stealth plane. It's a stealth plane. It goes fast, huh? And it can't be detected on radar. And you know the F-22 beats the F-35 and all those others in dogfights, right? Pretty cool. Well, I appreciate interviewing you. Yeah, thank you. I mean, you, you interviewed me, huh? <laughs> <laughs> this was a lot of fun. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yes. She's awesome, and I love her dad, and she's awesome. And I love your sisters and your mom, too. You can't leave them out. Do you want to plug any YouTube channel? Any channels, anything? Oh, I don't need to plug anything. I'm that silly stole pilot on Instagram. <laughs> Check out Stole Drag if you feel like it. Get off the internet! Don't look at the internet. Go fly and get into aviation. Follow this girl right here. <laughs> I got a tail dragger endorsement. I started flying, uh, it was a 1944 um, J3 Cub. And boy, that was a lot of fun. Really old, slow airplane, you know, maybe flies 70 miles an hour, top speed. That was a lot of fun. Old airplanes are cool. Yeah, really I think like, like the older ones like share more history. Yeah. The yeah. The newer ones are also super cool. Yeah.
He got out of it, and so I had a time without it. And then after uh, after I was hurt, I got back into it. Nice. Yeah. So how did you find out Rena? Uh, I saw uh, videos about it in like the early 2000s. So I started following it then, and uh, I kind of fell in love with the Formula One class. It kind of appealed to me, you know, maybe build an airplane and, and race someday. And uh, so that's, I kind of started following the races and then, of course, all the other classes too, but this was really the class I fell in love with. Nice. So what's special about this plane behind us? Um, so this airplane is a snowshoe that I built with the help of a lot of friends. And uh, so it's, uh, this airplane is the only flying snowshoe currently. And it's all uh, modified uh, for, to work for me with, as a paraplegic with a hand rudder and brake and throttle and all that. So how does the hand rudders work? Uh, so in my airplane, uh, I have a left stick, and it's forward and back for left and right rudder. Mm -hmm. And then I have, on each stick, so I have a normal center stick for pitch and roll control. And then uh, on each stick, I have a brake for differential brake. So I have left brake, right brake. And then on the left stick, I have a twist throttle, like a motorcycle. And then in this airplane, uh, I have several other similar hand controls in different airplanes. But in this airplane, I have a mixture control coming up through the hand control so that when I'm on the race course, I can dial, find, fine tune the uh, mixture on the race course. That's super cool. Yeah. So how do you, how do you like Reno? Is it fun? Oh yeah, Reno's, Reno's a lot of fun. This is a special place. It's gonna be, it's gonna be weird not having this every year. Sure. Yeah, I hope they find a new place soon. Me too. It, it, it'll be fun to keep doing it, but it won't be Reno. Yeah, yeah. nothing to compared to Reno. Exactly. This is a very special place. Absolutely, very special. So do you have any channels or Instagram or anything you want to promote to um, We have uh, Limitless Air Racing on Instagram and uh, Facebook. Make sure you to follow that. So thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Okay. So, hi, what's your name? I'm Allie. Hi, Allie. Well, what, what do you do? I'm here with Method 7. We're a performance eyewear company with a focus on eyewear for pilots. Nice. So what... What is Method 7? What do? We make uh, performance eyewear, like I said. They're um, glasses that are going to enhance clarity, uh, contrast, and color perception, all without polarization. So you can still see your screens, your digital screens in the aircraft, on your iPad or your phone, whatever it is you're looking at. There's no interrupting um, your vision when you, when you look at those screens. And then we're also offering you UV protection as well as infrared. So the kind of light that makes your eyes tired, hot, and dry. So your eyes are not having to work as hard to see what they're looking at. They're staying more rested, more relaxed, cooler even, but no matter how much time you're spending out in the sun at the flight levels. Nice, okay, so how long has been Method 7 going on? Uh, the company's been around for, I want to say, about 15 years. The aviation line, probably about 10. A um, lot of research and development went into it when we launched the pilot line. We talked to a lot of pilots about what they needed in a pair of eyeglasses, you know, what bothered them about the eyeglasses they were wearing, and uh, tried to develop something that would suit as many needs in the industry as possible. So what type of sunglasses do you have? We have quite a range. We have four different frames in the aviation line. 
the Aviatrix, the Ascent, the Patriots, and the Altitude. And they all kind of serve a different style, different sizes of faces, different face structures. But then we put our, you know, our, our patented lenses in both a shatterproof polymer and a, a beautifully clear glass. And you can get uh, any of our frame styles in either lens that you prefer. So what's the top, what's your, what's the best selling so far? One of our best sellers is the Ascent. It's kind of a gunmetal gray, um, and they come in both, like I said, the polymer lens and the glass lens. Uh, that seems to be a really popular one. Probably our next best seller is the Aviatrix, the one we kind of use with our female customers in mind. It's this nice gold here. It has these nose pads that will never tangle in your hair when you wear them on top of your head. So that's been a really big seller for us as well. Nice. So why did you come to Reno? We love Reno. We love the air races. We actually have several pilots here that we sponsor, um, including, you know, Tommy was uh, one of our our best uh, sponsorees for, for a while. And you guys obviously still are big supporters of the product. Um, and you know, many pilots that were not, that aren't our sponsored pilots still really like the glasses and, and wear them when they race because it's important to be able to see every little thing just as quick as possible and to keep your eyes rested. If you're looking out for other aircraft, you're looking out on the ground, making sure you're staying on the course, you want to have the best vision possible when you're doing it. That's super cool. Well, thank you. Of course. Good to see you. Where do they find the products? And where do you find where do they find the products? Today at Reno we're located in the pits next